the amount of time it takes me to type that shit is the lag. I think that's what equals the length of the lag between what I see on the screen while we're talking and what I see when I'm scanning the. You're live now. What? You're live now. Yes, I am. Yeah. But on my end, it says I'm live the minute I click go live on Zoom. Uh -oh. Anywho, okay, I, I'm going to assume that we're up and running and say the things that I have to say. Hi, everybody. I'm Rachel Levers here with my sister, Cassandra, and we Hi. are residential real estate professionals in Southeast Michigan. I'm a residential real estate broker, which is the buy and sell side, and Cassandra is a, do you want to? Money. I do the money. I'm a loan originator. I help with the mortgage part of it, if you need one. Otherwise, pay cash arguably the more important part. Um, but what we are not, it's important that we point out to you what we are not. I am not an attorney, although a lot of what I do might look like attorney stuff and I deal with legal things. I'm not an attorney. I'm also not an attorney. I, there's a lot of legal documents involved in what I do, but I'm not an attorney. Yep. And I'm also not a financial advisor, even though we'll talk about money. And big financial decisions will be made. I'm not a financial advisor. Me neither. And I talk about money a lot. Uh, the most. Yeah. Yep. The most best. Um, and since, oh, not since real estate, but real estate in general has a lot of moving parts. So we are here to try and break it down for you into digestible bite-sized pieces uh, we encourage you to post any comments or call us out if you think we're wrong or if you just want to, you know, a further explanation about anything, you're welcome to join us on the Zoom call. Um, the Zoom ID is 221-168-7580, or you can post your comments or questions here on in the comment section on Facebook. Um, so our topics for today are, you want to start? Because interest rates are like the thing that buyers want to talk about the most. Yes. Somehow interest rates became the key critical question to buying a house. It, like that's the make it or break it um, to picking your loan, to picking your lender. And there's a lot of I want to say deception to a point when it comes to advertising of interest rates. There's a ton of deception. It always matters to read the fine print because we talked about discount points a mm -hmm. few weeks back. Yes. Um, and those are tied to interest rates, but interest rates are fantastic. Great time to buy or refinance. Typically, I mean, the projections are that everybody should be able to refinance and save money right now, mm -hmm. um, which is fantastic. But I guess I just want to say, you know, rates go between, you know, two and 5%. So they're really freaking great. But there's some things that affect your interest rate that is offered to you. Uh, you can either pay for your interest rate, you can take money okay. or go ahead. I'm going to do the job of interrupting you because I don't, I'm not in your world. So paying for my interest rate, is that a discount point? Is that buying points? That is buying points. And okay. a lot of the advertisements that are out there have the caveat, you know, interest rate of 2%, you know, paying $4,000 to get that interest rate. So everybody cares hard about interest rates. But if you ask them six months later, they don't remember what the hell the interest rate is on their mortgage. Right. So, and I feel like to a degree, though, an interest rate, knowing your interest rate and understanding the impact of like, say you have a 3% versus a 3.5% rate on a 30-year mortgage adds up to a significant amount of money over time. Oh, but it I've, absolutely does. For sure. Um, but it's not the only important piece when you're no. shopping for a mortgage or you know what I feel like interest rates are interest rates are the price per square foot of the mortgage world. In my world, people, sellers and buyers get hung up on, well, what's the price per square foot? Well, they do. Oh my God. It's so weird. I, primarily sellers. Cause when I go to their house, you know what I think it is? I think it's the thing that they know to talk about and people like to, they like to be relevant. They like to 
know and let you know that they know it. Nobody likes to feel like they don't know what's going on. So when I meet with a client for the first time, one of the things they've heard about, they've heard other people talk about, builders talk about in range of on average to come up with a quick and dirty number as a builder, you know, it's a, like $175 a square foot to build a house. Well, that's a number, but does that include the price of the land and what finishes like, right? So it's always a range right. of value and I'm getting off into a rabbit trail, but because no, wait, a- you're making a really good point because I think maybe you're right. It's a key point that people can talk about and not feel completely in the dark. Exactly. So if you're, you've got a touch point or an anchor point to get your bearings around. And I feel like interest rates are that for you and they are important. Um, and price per square foot on my end is important. And it's a piece of a bigger picture that you don't, boy, you, you should understand, or at least your professional should understand. Right. Well, and so part of this is like, yes, interest rate is important. It's not the end all be all price per square foot important. It's not the end all be all, which is why it's important to have somebody who has been in the business, who has, you know, good reviews or comes highly recommended. That's where the professional piece comes in. Yeah. If you've got, if I have a loan officer. If I call a call center. Well, hear, hear, hear me out. If your professional is worried about making a sale, you, you're going to have a different experience than if your professional is your advocate. And when yes. you have a professional who is your advocate, they're going to look out for your best interest. It's, a, it's called a fiduciary, actually. Yes. Um, and if, if your professional has that mindset, then you as the consumer don't have to be so burdened with trying to learn how to understand a mortgage. And that's truly where the value of someone like you comes into play. Because honestly, if I'm going to take the time to learn all about mortgages, I might as well just get my license and get my yeah. own mortgage. Exactly. And so I had a client ask me yesterday about interest rates. And this is one of the reasons that I, I picked this as my topic, I guess, or the part that I was going to talk about. Because he asked about the rate and I was telling him he you know it's a special program you can only lock up for 22 days and he's like well why and I was you know I, I don't want to go off into this thing but a lot of times people ask and they want to know they, they ask really specifically about interest rate stuff and I go well do you want to talk about mortgage-backed securities and the fact that the market tanked during coronavirus and that the government stepped up and started buying all the bonds because the right. investors didn't want it and how the forbearance stuff went into it like it's this whole and it's, macro thing dude and it's so much bigger on the back end as a consumer I call you and I'm and you're like I can lock your rate for this long well and I'm over here going like, I feel like this should be like buying a gallon of milk. I walk in, it's this much. And you're over here saying it's only this much for a certain time it's period. It's like when you go to buy gas. Yes. You're like, it was eight cents was earlier. It's the that. same gas in the tank. Yes. Why the hell is it different today than it was, you know, so, yesterday? They, so, they, yes, this is perfect. Because then your mortgage rate is kind of like, almost like an option. Like uh, uh, if you yeah. buy this gas before the end of the month, I will give it to you for $2 and 50 cents a gallon. And if we commit to that, if the price of gas goes down, guess what? I'm still paying two fifty. but if the yeah. price of gas goes up, I'm locked in. I, yeah, it's, you have it's it. Me, but it does illustrate that, that key bit. And there's some nuances to it. A lot of lenders have flew it down. Brokers can pull it, take it to a different lender. There's, yep. you know, there's always so, a little bit. So but, unless, yeah. unless you're looking for a financial degree, those are things that you, as that I'm supposed to handle. Get, yes. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Cause you're like talking about float down. Like we all know. Oh yeah. the float I know. Down. I don't know what the hell that is. Like, is your that like professional a should, I pay for. Yeah. Your professional should talk with you about that. But so, so many people get fixated on that tiny number yep. of the rate, but there are so many other like blooms that go off of it and that's not the right word but there's so much more that goes into it there's so much there's so many workarounds to it mm -hmm. um and it gets frustrating explaining the rate over and over so I, i'm good at it now i don't like really get frustrated unless somebody's like you know they can beat you by 0.012 percent and i go just take you know just take it i mean i do not have eight hours to Give go over financial education all of it yeah, about how you paying 
$2,000 right now up front for that quarter of a percent actually translates to it's going to take you three years to recover that rate and you're going to sell this house in two yeah. years and we already talked about that like yeah oftentimes it's a 200 months. month recoupment like really are you going to be in the house for 200 months before you start saving the big bucks like yeah. yep and it's, and the the frustration comes from just having been down the road so many times and yeah. and you really start to feel for people because you like I they don't want to get screwed. Well, and as a professional, it's hmm. My job is to look out for your best interest. And when you tell me X and I have the full story and I can see the end and and this it I'm treading lightly because what I want to say is when I can clearly see that this is best for you. And you're over there telling me no, but now it starts to feel very parental and, and wrong. So I don't know. It's just, well, I think that that's part so of the much. fiduciary. I think totally. uh, I never want to totally. step on anybody's toes and tell them totally. what they have to do. I no. definitely guide. I definitely back it up with reasons much in the same way, a professional, right? Yes. I'm not going to yes. go doctor or a lawyer, or, but in the same way, any professional would advise you to like a mechanic. Hey, right. you're, you need a new wheel bearing. That's the weird sound. Nah, fuck you. I'll take it to 40 other places. Well, it might fall off in the meantime, but you know, you're supposed to listen to that and trust that and, yes. and move forward. But I, I feel like people, well, and that's a, that it's a, you know what? I feel like we're dialing into something here. Cause that's a really good, the mechanic analogy is a really good one. And as a professional, what I can do is ed, like inform you so that you can make mm -hmm. an educated decision at the end of the day, I'm always going to back your play. So I may recommend yeah. you take step one, two, and three, because that in my experience is going to get you the result you want. But if you tell me, I'm going to use a real thing. If you, if I tell, if I advise you to write an offer that's around I don't know, 4% less than asking price for this particular property. And I really think that you will get the property. You've expressed to me that you want it. We'll go through the data and explain why this makes sense. But if you stand there and say, no, I want to write an offer that's 20% below asking, though I strongly advise against it because I don't think it will get you what you want. If that's what you tell me you want to do, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do it with a mindset that we're going to win. Right. I'll put everything into doing that. I, um, I do similar things right? with, uh, yes. I mean, I've had people buy, in my opinion, excessive discount points. Yes, because they're trying to manage to a rate and you can see a bigger yes. picture where that doesn't make sense. But yeah. they're hung up on wanting this two and a half percent. Or sorry, right. Sorry, sorry even though they, wrong. no, you're right. But even though, you know, there's the rate you qualify for the rate you can buy and then the rate you can get paid to take, mm -hmm. right? It, again, it's a teeter totter. So, but a lot of people don't know that. So the, f one of the first things I do is I've started saying this. It took me years. I go, well, honestly, you can pick whatever rate you want. And they go, what I can. And I go, yeah. So that's actually that's helped a really me. Good starter. That, that makes your mind go to a different place and you get yeah, to have a people go, conversation what? from there. Yeah, I had a guy just buy down his rate. To, he's, I gave him the four options. He wanted two 30-year options and two 15-year options. And he got to look at them all, and he knew the cost, right? He looked, looked, looked at his free rate, the center of the teeter-totter, and then he's like, you know, let me see the lowest rate I can buy. And he picked the lowest rate he could buy and, did, you know, he could – I would do this for him. I say, you know, it's going to cost you $4,300, but your monthly payment drops by $200. And he's like, oh yeah, I'll make up the money in. What a, what a better way to have that conversation because you're really empowering your buyer with the tools yeah. to understand all of their options. Yeah, because it's not my choice. Like it's not my, Yes. it's not that it's not my job. My job is to inform you and I'm, I don't want to overwhelm people, but I've approached interest rates differently because- God, how can I do that as a, People are as a so real estate agent? Specific about them, and and so I just want them to know. Ultimately, it's really up to them. And a lot of people just think there's only one rate available. That's the rate they gave me. They quoted me that. Well, you could have whatever rate you want. Mm -hmm. And then it automatically, naturally makes you go, okay. So where are the? What am I leveraging for this? What is the leverage for that? Yeah. 
And yeah. I love that. I want, I want something similar that kind of cuts through the bullshit in my world. I can try to help you think yeah, about I that. Gotta, I mean, I'm it, Rachel, it took that. me four yeah. years to go, oh my oh, God, this. just tell people they can pick because they really can. It's better yeah. than saying this is this and that and that and just go, well, what do you want? And I have a spreadsheet and mm-hmm. have some really amazing calculators on my website. So um, it's, it's helped a lot. Yeah, no, I love it. And consumers like it. Well, yeah, it's it's empowering. It forces the conversation to be uh, meaty and specific and educational, and it empowers the consumer. And that, like, uh, nothing better than a client who knows what they want and what's going on, right? An educated client can make educated decisions. Well, imagine if you bought a house and you hear your neighbor or, or you hear your friend talking about buying a house and they go, hey, did you know that you can pick your own interest rate? Like, cause mm-hmm. people talk about stuff like, Oh, I just bought a house. Did you know you could do this? And mm-hmm. often it. So my go if I remember when you would, um, what's the word you created a cussy fair balling. Oh yes. Cussy. Well, I kind of make them fair balling, but yes. cussy, I'm just going to throw it way back and maybe she'll talk about what a cussy is, but it's similar. Like my goal is to drop it and hear it come back or spread yes. far and wide to the yes. point where people go, you can pick your own rate. You are not locked into yep. whatever they say it is or whatever they yes. advertise. It, it unsticks the already programmed conversation about mortgages. Yes. From like, typically, I mean, obviously it, it, we're talking about like true. within like t- mo- mostly what we see, there's always an outlier. Yeah. There's always that one guy who already gets it. And then there's yeah, also but- the other guy who will never get it. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Correct. But generally speaking, though, yeah, that the tool is well. The general the narrative is those with the gold make the rule, right? Mm-hmm. I'm the lender. I make the rules. You do what I say. But there is a lot of wiggle room in that, and obviously, mm-hmm. hire a professional to help you walk and navigate. Because my whole job is to navigate you around the 40 people who have to work on your file to clear it, mm-hmm. and. I'm your advocate to get it to close with the best terms for mm-hmm. you. Yes. So That's you don't the have whole to purpose be, of my job. And, and it saves you, excuse me, it saves you as the consumer from having to think about, learn about, and then yeah. figure out how to think about all those things. And in that respect, your job is very similar to mine because that's what I do as well. I know which things need to be thought about. I can guide you to, you know, things that maybe you didn't think about paying attention to and help you understand why paying attention to things you thought you had to might not be in your best interest. Right. Like, people get very nuanced, get pretty hyper-focused on some things sometimes and they uh, get a little bit of laser vision. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Let's hold get this, like this. this is our real, the real estate yoga pose. Yes. Oh, I'm looking at all the things. I, I, it's fun to see you in that position. It's fun to see you too. I do it so I can see you do it. I don't care that I'm doing it. I know. I was like, okay, so we should screenshot this and make it our like logo, our show logo, our show go. Show go. Um, yeah, the real estate goggles. It's pretty good. It is. Um, so and, what are you talking about today? You're talking uh, about oh, inspections? Yeah, I want to talk about inspections. Uh, and it's a big topic that, I like, I don't even know where to begin Uh, from a inspections are in Michigan. I have to be specific because we're in Michigan. So real estate in different parts of the country is conducted differently. And there are different norms. Think of it as like cultural norms. They're really important to know when you're doing business in a different culture. So what I'm about to tell you is pertains to my market for sure. But what I hear other professionals around the country talking about, it may not go that way where you are. But generally speaking, in my real estate contract, there is a line item that says buyer, you know, wants to do their due diligence on the property. Here's what I tell my clients. Nobody expects you to spend a half a million dollars after 20 minutes of walking through a house. So we have this protection clause that allows you the right to do your due diligence to do an inspection on the property. And the point of the inspection, and I'm not here to be luxury, but I'm trying to give you some bearings and context. The point of the inspection is it's really the buyer's only opportunity to make sure that the property is in the condition they would expect 
for a property of this style, age, and condition in this location, in this price range. So there's a lot of fucking caveats in what I just said, but a very common pitfall. Yes. What I, so just, I'm obviously not a realtor. So people go, oh, I'll, I'll get the inspection and the appraisal. And I say, just so you know, an inspection is not required by me as the lender. However, it's like buying a used car, but taking it to your mechanic. So you're like stealing my thunder right now. Oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, well, that's literally how I tell people like, well, I'm going to venture that you heard me tell that to somebody because that's exactly what I tell my clients. Oh, I don't, I don't think I have, but that makes sense. It's your, of course. I mean, we share a brain really behind all of this connected. So yes, it is exact. Like you totally just stole my thunder. What Cassandra said is true. Your home inspection is you're buying a used item. Yeah. So you're Sorry. buying a used, no, but it's the best analogy. Yeah. You got your, if you're buying a used car, you have an opportunity to take it to your trusted mechanic who can't see the future and who's not going to see everything. And who's but impartial. He's, but he is impartial. And he's going to help guide you on whether this car is in the condition you would expect for a car of this age with this many miles in this price range. So let me stop right there and complete the conversation because it is not, you don't take that car to the mechanic and say, well, this $5,000 used car that I'm buying has all this shit wrong with it. So I'm going to go back to the guy who's selling it and tell him I want him to put new seats in it. I want new tires. I want to oil and all the filters changed. I want an engine tune up. Like if you are going to ask that guy for all those things, you're actually trying to get a new car for the cost of a used car and houses. People go into their home inspection thinking that it maybe is their opportunity to come out with a honey do list and, and dicker a lot about the price. What? Oh, I lost you, Cassandra. You're totally frozen. Um, so I'm going to just keep going. Um, so with a what's home the inspection. No, you're like the Cassandra. the most unreasonable? Cassandra, you are frozen. Sorry. Yeah. Hopefully I'm in a good position. No. Okay, you're back now. So say what you were saying because okay. you were garbly and frozen. What was I saying? I don't know when I froze. Um, well, we were talking about the mechanic and, oh, okay. So what I said was you were talking about honey do lists and I was going to just ask for a a little bit of uh, levity, which is what is the most ridiculous list of these are the things I want that people have come back with after their inspection. Like what's the most ridiculous thing you've seen? I've seen property. Yeah. So no, I would like to reframe that and tell you that because I want this to be valuable for, you know, if anybody actually watches this, if you're, you can come out, I promise you, no matter who you hire to do your home inspection and let's come back to that because who you hire is a totally different conversation, but let's say all like you're doing an inspection, the house is a 10, you trust and know your inspector is amazing. And your inspector goes in there no matter what house you're buying, you are going to walk out of that inspection with a 37 page report of everything that's wrong with your house. Right. And it starts to feel overwhelming. It's like this outlet doesn't work. The dishwasher's missing a screw on the mount. There's a switch that doesn't go to anything. There's a stubbed gas line that doesn't have a cap on it. There's a weird wire hanging in the garage. There's a crack in the pavement. Like Yeah. All houses have all of these things. Oh, I know my house has those. Yeah. But when you're buying, it's so scary. And you're talking about such large investments of money and emotion for people that you really start getting hung up on. Look, I have this, I have this much proof that this house is not worth a half a million dollars. This Uh, house is a piece of trash. (laughs) Yes. And then suddenly you want $50,000 off. Well, it's no, no, because no, in no. perfect condition with none of those things, the house would be worth six hundred thousand dollars. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a, it's a bigger and really like and it's okay to do your inspection and walk away from the house and and nine. How often does that happen? Well, I'd like to come back to that because it's 
happening a lot right now, way more than it, it ever has. Is yes. it because you're locking them down and then deciding if you want to buy it? Uh, well, maybe, but I don't think so. But let's come back to that because I want to finish what I was saying, no, which won't. I lost. No, no. Yes, we will. No, we won't. Yes, we will. Hold on. Okay. So you're doing your, insp oh, nine times out of 10. If there really is something wrong with the house. So let's do a different scenario. I have uh, an inspection report come back where the buyers, I'm representing the seller. The buyer's agent comes to me and says, Hey, there is a crack in the basement where you can see daylight coming in from outside. Well, my seller has no freaking clue that that's happening. So my point is the buyer is likely to ask for, rather than the buyer being like, fuck this, I'm out of here because they're paying good money for the house. If you, if you still want the house and that's not a scary repair, come back and let us know. Cause nine times out of 10, if there's a real underlying problem, the seller usually had no idea. That's why the problem exists. If you see that the attic is infested with bats, they probably have no idea. Nine times out of 10, they did not know. And they're happy to remediate. Usually sellers are like, holy shit, thanks for telling me. I'll fix it. Do you still want my house? But you can't yeah. give the whole report and say, here, fix all of this shit. Fix all the things. And I had one, I have one, actually it's closing today. Uh, it closed two hours ago. And their inspector found foundational issues, which mm -hmm. the current owner had purchased it and the foundation issues had been rectified. Mm -hmm. However, the crawl space area had never been touched mm -hmm. because apparently the company never went in there or couldn't mm -hmm. go in there. Mm -hmm. So he still wanted the house. So there's a $20,000 credit from the seller on the closing yeah. disclosure so that that repair can get fixed and the title company is yeah. gonna hold it in the throw. So, I like this is a great example happy of happy to do it there. And there's this no is, clue. you had said earlier about working around something. Cause there's another way to get there. And that's a perfect example. You don't have to walk away. You, you can negotiate around some inspection issues to still get what you want. Yeah. She still loved the house. It was just yep. the cost of this huge thing. And the sellers were like, we had no idea. We'll, we'll absolutely. We had no idea. We had no idea. We'll pay for it. We thought it was completed and we'll go after them on our own after closing because we did not know. They felt bad. Well, and I mean, similar scenario, I was representing a seller. Buyer's inspector did a report and came back with, I mean, inspectors can only do what they can do too. It's not the be all end all. Inspector came back with a report. Buyer had a lot of like requests. And the one I'm thinking of was, the house was also on a crawl and there was no vapor barrier. And the buyer was like, we need you to put in a vapor barrier because it's going to rot the underlayment, all this other, like they gave this big reason. And I went to my seller and I said, so they're asking for this among other things. And my seller said, oh, so the house used to have that. And I had it removed and had something way more effective done to the underside of the house oh. to prevent these other problems that are caused by a vapor barrier. The inspector didn't know about it. Like it could have been a deal breaker issue for my, for the deal, for the buyer and the seller. But because they came and asked, we were able to educate them and actually deliver a better product. I right. wouldn't have thought to ask have my known. client on listing the property. If, did you do anything special to the underside of the house? Right. You know, I just, I would never know to ask that. So, you know, having conversations instead of making demands goes a really long way. Yeah. That's all. I'm, trying to think of all the, I'm thinking of all the things <laughs> like the special things you could do to the side of the house. I don't know. <laughs> I know. <Whatever. laughs> you asked about that. So well, anyway. sometimes open, clear communication is uh, the way to go. Actually yeah. all the time. Always. Go, yeah. So. So we yeah. have no, do we have any questions? I cannot see our um, I video. Have, no, I've got Roy saying we're doing a good job teaching wisdom, real estate and mortgage. I love Roy. Hi, Roy. Amy Nash. Hi, Amy and Julie Reisner. Am I saying her name right? Ries, Reisner, Reisner, Julie. Your friend Julie, right. Jiggs. Reisner. Julie Jiggs. Julie Jiggs. Julie Jiggs. JJ. Yeah. 
So, so she has a comment that maybe you can help me. It says, yeah, it's from earlier. So she was referencing what we were talking about. She says, yes, and it varies on systems. PPSF, paper planes safety first. What is PPSF? I don't know. Julie, if you're there, tell us what PPSF is. I could look. Google it. Do you have a tab open that you can Google? Oh, God. No, I'd have to wake my other computer up. My whole it. setup, I have to do this on my laptop because my computer doesn't. Um, it's. So can I keep talking about inspections? Yeah. Kathy Better says good morning. Hi, Kathy. So. In sp oh, can I just tell everybody? Hey, even if how much? No, no. Oh, go ah, I'm going to lose it. Okay. Your inspection is uh, your inspection is going <laughs> to tell you everything that's wrong with the house. Don't come back to your agent and say, this is not to code. None of it's to code. Unless your house was built like a minute ago, codes change constantly. Oh. Or a house built 20 years ago, I promise you it's not to code and nobody gives a fuck. Like nobody cares about Can I code. Also except for you your certificate of occupancy on a new build. That's the only place it matters. Can I also yes. tell you, do yes. not send your loan officer a copy of the inspection or your, report. Or I your, don't want it. Or your insurance agent, uh, they don't uh, need, they don't care, they don't want, and we're not, and you're not hiding anything by not sharing it. It's nobody's business, but yours. Yeah. Sorry. I don't want it. The underwriter doesn't want it. You can uncover a whole bunch of stuff. Nobody wants it. Yes. How much, so how Catherine, much is a home inspection? Catherine, we're going to talk about that. Hold on. There's a really important comment on there and we never got to the other side of home inspections as a seller. Uh, it varies. It usually depends on the size of the house, but I would say expect 450 to 550, depending on if you're going to add some, there are always add on items, right? You can always a la carte add some things um, that radon. Yeah. Radon is really trending right now, um, but you might want a water test, especially if you're on a well uh, septic evaluation and drain field evaluation. Those Parking. are required on some well, loan types. Stop. Yes, they are required on some loan types. But let me just tell you, if you are in a rural area with a septic, rural septics dear. on septics are, I don't know what you just did. Rural, fuck you. Anyway, that's not fair. It's <laughs> everybody watching when we do that. So your septic and drain field, pay a professional who knows what they're looking at. So like, oh God, you could hire an attorney to defend you in court. But if they're not a, a defense attorney, you might technically, yes, they can do the job, but if it's a trust attorney defending you in court, they're not going to do a great job. So a home inspector might know how to take the cap off of your shit tank and look in there, but a septic guy is going to know what to look at when he's in there and he's going to core your dirt and make sure that your drain field is handling the shit that's going into it. And those things are not cheap. Like don't no. cheap out on your septic they're, and drain field. They're five figures. They're to replace. Easy. Oh yeah easy yeah. at starting and that's if you can so this it's is the equivalent of a roof like you're they're expensive worse if you can worse. because if you don't have room in your building envelope and the restrictions require you to tap into like there are so many rabbit trails to go down on this but if you don't have a spot already identified and approved for another drain field and your drain field is collapsing now you're tearing it out and bringing in material to build another one if they'll even let you put that same kind in there, like pay the four or five hundred dollars to have a freaking shit tank guy look at your shit tank. Don't have your regular inspector just like look in the hole and tell you it looks like it's still working. There's poop in here. Yeah. Um, I know that's like oh, super passionate, but it's one of those things that when it does go wrong, it goes really, really wrong. And we we bounced over to this from a oh, price per square foot. Yes, thank you, Kyle. <laughs> oh, PPSF. I never use that. I don't use those. I like, never use it because I'm up there with interest rates and APR and you're over there with your PPSF. Yeah, but I don't ever call it PPSF. To be fair, that may be because I don't rely on it at all. Like to me, it's just like a, it's a thing that people care about that I don't use. I mean, I see it and I can calculate it but I don't put a lot of stock into it because I know that oh. understanding the value of a property is like making soup, 
You have However, lots of ingredients. Wow. Can I tell you yes. that the, and no. this is just general yeah. advice, I, I can tell you, I can tell you that okay. <laughs> if you are going to fight an appraisal, which is, yes. I'm not going to rabbit hole down there. That's another good topic. Square footage matters yes. and the price per square foot actually Does starts matter. to be about the only way you can win an appraisal argument. Ah, oh, okay, but I feel like you take, yeah. I'm and just letting is, you know. And to just to that is in such a specific context in a specific scenario, and she's right. It is important. I'm not. That's saying for the professionals. Important. That is not for the person buying a uh, house. That is well, nothing you need to know about. How about that? It, it's in the mix when understanding the value of a property, but it's not the end all be all. Be all end all. No. Or it's the end-all, be-all. Let's say that at the same time. Yeah. The end-all, end be-all, be be all. end-all. Damn it. So, um, okay. So let me go. What was that? Somebody. Kathy, okay, that's Catherine, really. Talking about Catherine. the, yeah. So at home inspection, Catherine says, as a seller, would you do one to avoid some of the surprises that might come up on an inspection? So Cassandra, I you're think, right. No. Well, so this is where real estate is gets super fucking contextual because up until two months ago, I would have said the same thing. Like generally speaking, priced correctly, you really don't need to do an inspection and you as a seller and you do run the risk oh. of do, doing an inspection um, and fixing a bunch of shit. And then another inspector is going to come in and find a different list of shit. Yeah. And I've seen this happen before. However, what I'm seeing now is you had said, is this because it's lock it down and then decide if you want it? Maybe. Um, but what we're seeing is a very increased expectation that the property will be perfect. And that I think is in alignment with the prices being driven up near the top of the range and over range in most cases, like, you know, you value a property and it's going to be, it's going to sell between here and here. And they're mostly selling up here. So on the yeah. heels of that, we're seeing buyers now more and more expecting the condition to be up here too. Um, prices so, yes. have I think that's because prices have risen um, relatively so far relatively so quickly however so, and and relatively high relatively the high relatively the leap quick. that they've made is solid but also keep in mind we're in one of the cheapest places to live and yeah. people are not used to that there is this mentality that houses are a hundred dollars a square foot mm -hmm. i'm just going to tell you like that's a hundred dollars a square foot trailer fucking up oh, up above this part of the mitten wait is this yeah. going to show right um here. from here on. up yeah that's right this yes. so from here up sure but anything so anybody from here down, anybody watching who's not from michigan <laughs> that's michigan and if you michigan. look at a map that's yes. what it looks like you can't yeah. go well i'm in idaho and you know here no this is michigan no, this is michigan this way yeah. that way that's correct. yeah that's yeah. correct to me yeah, so right anyway hand, thumb but, on the chin there's that i think people are a little freaked out by the cost of housing. It's yeah. still some of the lowest in the nation. See, I wouldn't uh, super affordable. Oh yeah. Um, our, our housing super cheap it's per square foot, all is that it, jazz was like, it, but is it super cheap relative to our cost of like our income? Yes. In this our area? cost of living okay. is among the lowest. It's among the lowest okay. in the country. And, that's, and when you say cost of living, that's including understanding the person, like how much what we make it costs to live here. Yes. Not that it's just, okay. Just making sure. How much we make and the cost of housing and food and all of those things. Like the general the percentage income. of our income yeah. that goes to cover those things is low. Yeah. And, and a lar the largest part of people's bills is housing. Our housing is really inexpensive. However, the cost of building materials is high. So the cost of the new builds, Julie and I have actually talked about this. Julie, Julie, Julie and I. Reisner. We were okay, talking Jake. about with, with, um, not Home Depot, with um, HGTV and people's yep. expectations for perfection. We're shocked that, um, so we, we're basically talking that a builder needs to be able to build a house and they're going to have to start removing the basement and removing the 
garage to get people into the starter entry level perfect yep. house that they want. Yep. Like how would they do that? Well, they're going to have to no so no garage cuz the excavating cheaper or and and no basement. Yep, digging the hole, putting and and depending on where you are in the world, those become it's normal. In Michigan, people want basements. It's weird because oh, yeah. you go across the nation and people just don't have them. Not the no. way we do. And I mean, this is a total rabbit trail and I have to answer Catherine. So Catherine, to answer your question, if you're still watching, oh, sorry. at this point in this market, it might make sense to get an inspection because then you can advertise, look, we found, we did this. We, we got our house as close to perfect condition as possible. We got this report. We fixed these things. And if you want to do your own report, go ahead. But if you don't look, we're providing this third party independent list of shit. It's a way to really make your house stick out against the competition in a way that wasn't necessary the last couple of years. That makes it. sense Bring because I could drop $500 on an inspection and literally be like, I will email you a copy of the inspection. These yep. were the items that were fixed based on it. And this is why and it's. Let's go you yeah. one better. Let's say you uncover something really big and scary. You can decide to just price accordingly if you don't want to tackle it. It makes you very transparent as a seller. It removes that fear that sellers or that buyers have about being duped. And sometimes not like, not like anybody's being malicious, but you don't know. How would you know what's under the hood unless you can look under the hood? And there are some, <laughs> like, I can't look inside the walls of my house. Wait, I have another car thing. We went to sell yeah. a truck a few months ago. I finally was like, I will buy the Carfax. Here's the fucking Carfax report. It's never been, you know what I mean? Like, here's, I paid money to show you it's never been in an accident. The yep. VIN is clean. All of the things, the yep. mileage, where it was bought, where it's been registered. Yes. This freaking thing sold almost immediately. So can I ask you, yeah. are buyers less likely to get their own home inspection if the seller provides one for them? I don't know. Any agent representing a buyer is always going to advise that they get their own Right. But so I don't sure. know, because in our market, at least in the markets that we I do a call. In, I don't. Well, I feel like I'm about to reveal my dumb, but I have I don't I'm trying to think of any time that a seller has ever given me an inspection at listing. And it's an opportunity for a huge advantage because usually we get the inspection when it's gone on the market and fallen off the market a couple of times. And then and we, I'm we asking the agent, what is going on over there? My buyer likes this house, but we can see that you've lost a bunch of buyers. So what's wrong with it? And we've talked about this. Uh, was it last week? We were talking about the most traffic is within that first week where it's people who have already been looking in that price range and know the neighborhood. So I'm, I'm really sorry. I was reading. So Judy Perry is saying, I fucking love it. She's answering your question. Seller last year had a pre-sale inspection because he wanted no surprises. They found mold, had it taken care of. He provided the report to the buyer who still did his own. They came back without asking mm -hmm. for anything. It was smooth. Smoothest transaction I've had. I opened it Yay! up. Depends on the house. Depends on the sale. Of course, it's always contextual, but we want to maximize your odds of winning. The market has shifted a little bit. Buyer's expectations are higher. Values are still high and holding steady. So the, yeah, that's another like. So, and I've been in, so we've been in our house 10 years. And if we were going to sell it, You've just made a really compelling case for something I literally shook my head no to 10 minutes yeah, ago, which is, yeah, I guess I could. I used to say no bucks. to that. I know what I'm going to make when I sell the house, roughly. I'm not a realtor, but I can kind of do a CMA. Yeah, you can get the but, top and bottom range and yeah. where you're likely to land. Dude, there's a house right over there that's listed for 420 in my neighborhood. Uh-uh. It is like $100,000 over, in my personal opinion. I'm really excited to see what it sells for. But mm -hmm. if I got a home inspection here. And Are they stoners? Is that thing, what listed for $420? Uh, maybe it's $419.99. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. They're like, they're older. I think they're, they've got, gone into home. But you've made a really compelling point. I would probably get an inspection, take care of all of the things. I hope to God there was nothing major, but I don't want to saddle somebody who's buying this house with anything. I want them to enjoy it. Like I would never, I would feel terrible if 
mm-hmm. something happened and after every, they bought it. And not, not everybody has that like drive to hand over a good product. I, you know, all spectrum of people. Let's just go like, let's pretend you're a flipper. The inspection in this market, all things considered, is starting to make sense in a way that it hasn't for the last handful of years. Now, keeping in mind, I'm only seven years deep. So maybe, you know, this is, there's nothing new under the sun. I'm sure agents who have been in the business for 25 years are like, oh yeah, we were doing them all over the place in the eighties because interest rates are high and there was tons of- Look at my headshot. (laughs) Right. No, I mean, but seriously, it's probably, we're not having new ideas here, but- right. And in the context that you are doing business in impacts the way that you win. So selling your house is business, even though it's emotional. So yeah, I would do an inspection today as well. And I wouldn't have a year and a half ago. I know I would sell my house for top dollar without doing anything. Yeah. That's much true anymore. Yeah. That expectation of perfection due to the HGTV. So hopefully builders are able to, but, you know, not in my backyard. Oh, there's a whole new plat going up over there. and But I don't yeah, want them to heard. take down the trees. Well, mm-hmm. everybody needs affordable housing. So this is like, a, so mom says she loves this session. I have to give her props out for that. Thank Hi, you. Hi, mom. <laughs> um, no, you're right. That uh, Maybe we talk about that on another episode too, because we're a little bit over on our time. Okay. Um, but the up. whole, the NIMBY bit. How does, how does 45 minutes go so fast with you? I don't know because we are passionate about what we're doing. I don't know. Dude, I could talk about popsicles for 45 minutes with you. I know. I know. It's always a pleasure. This is like the traveling thing, right? I, people are like, well, where are you guys going now? And I'm like, you know, I don't, we could have fun in fucking Williamston. I think we would have an amazing vacation in Stockbridge. It doesn't matter where. Stockbridge is adorable. Oh, we can (laughs) totally do that. I'm serious. We don't have to go to Paris, but we can do that again. We could do that again now too. Okay. It's 1119. So I am going to shut this down. Everybody, thank you uh, for participating. Love being able to interact in the comments. If you have like, I know it's a cliche, but if there's a piece that you're like, why I wish they would talk about this. They stopped. She never went back to that question yes. she was going to answer. Post it. Message me. Message Cassandra. Get <laughs> us the information because we really just want to do right by you. Um, we do tend to have fun and get off on rabbit trails. So if we're doing something that's oh. driving you bananas, you tell we us. We swear too much. much. Dad says we swear too much. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. I know. I need to see that in a comment if that I'm gonna I'm kidding. Okay. We'll work on swearing. <laughs> Put on your real estate goggles. Good luck. See ya. <laughs> Bye. See you next week. Bye.